This is the Inclusion Think Tank podcast brought to you by New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education, where we talk about inclusive education, why it works, and how to make it happen. On today's episode, I welcome my guest, Catherine Kelly. Catherine is the executive director of Include NJ. Join our conversation as we discuss why it is important to include parents and caregivers in the inclusive education conversation. I would like to welcome everyone back to another episode of the Inclusion Think Tank podcast brought to you by New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education. I am your host, Arthur Aston, and I am happy to welcome my guest to the podcast today, Catherine Kelly. So Catherine, thank you for uh, joining me for this episode. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here. Yes. So, um, you know, we talked a, a few minutes uh, before I started recording and, um, you know, let you know a little bit about myself. And um, so I'm excited to hear about you and uh, to learn all of the uh, great things you all are doing there uh, at Include NJ. So, uh, again, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you. Um, I can just jump into it and let you know a little bit about myself and a little bit about the organization. Yeah, that would be great. Can you tell us, um, you know, who you are and um, what you do? And I always uh, like to know how people became interested in the uh, world of inclusive education and also if you could share something fun you'd like to do in your free time. <laughs> You're perfect. Yes. That's a lot. <laughs> I'm a fun person, so I've got a lot to share with, with you, yes. but I'll pick one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so uh, again, uh, my name is Catherine Kelly. I am the executive director of Include NJ, and we are an organization, we're a brand new organization that seeks to help parents and caregivers of students uh, 3 to 21, so running the whole gamut of like pre-K all the way to transition. We are here to help those parents really navigate the school system uh, and work towards an inclusive education for the students that they care for and the students and their families. Um, myself, my, I, I have a background in nonprofit marketing. I have been doing nonprofit marketing for too many years. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, so I come to the organization uh, through a different organization that I worked at previously. Um, it seems like many of my roles in the past have always gravitated towards students and towards education. So I have worked for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. I've worked for Little Kids Rock. I've worked for Eye to Eye. I've worked for all these organizations that are kind of looking to have, um, have the same end goal, and that is to create a society that we want to have. We want our, our kids to grow up and model the society that we want to build for them. So that is uh, what lands me here at Include NJ, uh, is my background in nonprofits and my background in marketing. And really, when I talk about myself as a marketer, I like to think of myself more as uh, kind of a storyteller of the organization that I come to for. So I really have to have that kind of passion in me to be able to share those stories and finding out about NJCIE and finding out about the, the drive for inclusive education just was a natural fit in all of the work that I've been doing for over a decade now in nonprofits. Wow, that's great. I, I love that you said, that, you know, being a storyteller uh, for the organization. Yeah. That is, it's so true because you really are, um, you know, you're putting out to the world what the organization does and, um, you know, telling their story. You're you are the uh, the storyteller. That's a really uh, really great way to explain it. That's cool. <laughs> so I am actually part of a community chorus here in my hometown of Jersey City. So uh, I love that's what I'm doing in my free time is just belting out Broadway and uh, American song from the American Songbook. Oh, that's great. That's so cool. Yeah. I um I love Broadway. I love going to shows in New York and. Uh, I recently saw uh, Fat Ham on Broadway before it closed. It was uh, oh, very fun. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was really really fun show. <laughs> but uh, wow, that's great! So you're a singer, yay! <laughs> that's cool. Um, 
So um, can you tell us what, what does inclusive education mean to you? Absolutely. So uh, inclusive education, I can tell you from my own perspective as a parent, uh, I discover, I found out a lot more about what goes on in a special education setting versus a general education setting when my my child was diagnosed with ADHD at a very young age. Uh, I got to learn the ins and outs of students being pulled out of their classrooms and being segregated for their special time with their paraprofessionals and with their special education educators. And I also got a really good understanding of what that felt like on the other side of it. Um, I was diagnosed myself through having my child diagnosed with ADHD, but which is how it happens these days. Um, as especially as women, we are diagnosed much later in life and people find out, hey, I've this whole time I've had ADHD. That answers so many questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was diagnosed later in life and uh, looking back at my own education back in the 90s, um, aging myself here, but like I would have had such an easier time had I known that at the time. And I think that it would have been great if other students around me also had an understanding of what was going on with me mm -hmm. and that would have prepared them to be able to collaborate better with me and prepared me to be able to work in the classroom uh, with everyone around me. So that's my backstory. And then as uh, coming up and being, you know, the mama bear and fighting for your kids and fighting for the education they're entitled to, uh, I ran into so many roadblocks just as a mom. And I'm just a mom with a kid with ADHD. And I know that it's a, it's a neurodiversity that a lot of us have. And a lot of us are being, we're, we're getting more, uh, more precise in how we diagnose that now. So uh, a lot of us are coming up and a lot of our children are coming up with ADHD. And so it is just generally out there. And a lot of information is out there on how to teach children with those different learning differences that we have. Yet you still run into the walls in the general education classrooms. The mom just coming up in at IEP meetings and 504 meetings, just like, I don't understand why we can't have um, these accommodations for my kid that's just gonna make it easier on everybody involved. Uh, it was always a fight with my school district. And that was in everything I tried from pulling out of public school into charter systems and going back into the public school system. And I've never encountered any uh, collaboration as a parent in the school district that I'm in. So uh, that's that's where I'm coming to this from and, and seeing students that are completely pulled out of the system and watching how they, they don't have that integration with their peers and their peers don't have the integration either. That's a problem mm -hmm. on the other side. Like, uh, it's not like there's, we're living in a society where everyone is sitting exactly the same at a desk and everyone is, you know, and everyone learns exactly the same way. So these people are going to have to graduate from school at some point and work with tons of different people with tons of different learning styles. And we're not preparing our general ed students to do that either. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. What you said about the, um, uh, you know, if, if you had known about, you know, ADHD earlier, you know, your peers would have been able to better collaborate with you and understand and, you know, and, and you would have a better understanding of them as well. It's just, um, you know, I, I think that's what the, um, you know, the good thing about the early diagnosis and the early, uh, you know, the, the integrating both classes uh, together to have, you know, people with disabilities in the general education setting to have uh, everybody just understands everyone a lot better. And, uh, you know, and it makes it okay, because as you said, eventually these children who are now in kindergarten or first or second grade, eventually they're going to graduate high school and be out in the working world 
where people, like you said, they learn differently and they will, um, you know, they will have to uh, work side by side and on teams with, you know, people who, who learn differently and, and have different, uh, you know, styles of, of learning and, and ways of doing things. And, uh, you know, the earlier we can, uh, you know, have them working together and understanding each other better, I think that really uh, sets everyone up uh, for, you know, better, a better future. Completely agree. It's yeah. the society that we're trying to build. And I think that every generation does that, trying to build a better society for mm -hmm. our children and the generation after us. And if we want to build that society, we have to model it in our education system. Wow. Yes. So true. <laughs> um, you you started talking a little bit uh, about Include NJ. Uh, when you were introducing yourself. Can you share a little bit more about the organization with us? Um, things like their mission and vision and the uh, core values of Include NJ. Yeah, absolutely. So as I said, Include NJ is a, a fairly new organization and we are coming to, we're coming into New Jersey as the least inclusive of all of the school districts, so all the states. Uh, we're coming in as a tool for parents. Uh, we're supporting and empowering the families, all the families of students with disabilities, uh, because we feel like we need that kind of networking and advocacy to come from a kind of a groundswell of parents and caregivers and all of the people basically in these students' lives that are fighting for their right to a free and appropriate public education. Uh, so our mission is to support parents, guardians, and I'm reading it because we just updated it and I'm so excited that we did. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, to support parents, guardians, and caregivers and their families to advocate for inclusion, equity, and belonging in education. So that's for students uh, with disabilities from age three to 21. So like I said, we want to run the gamut from pre-K all the way to transition planning. We want to ensure that the parents have someone they can go to or a community that they can go to uh, that also agrees that inclusive education is research-backed and is the way to go. Yeah, I, I, I love, um you know, that, that a reoccurring theme is collaboration uh, through this conversation and so many other conversations I've had on the podcast. Um, you know, it's, it's so true because I can remember as I've shared with you and others uh, guests, I, I was born with a disability. So I've had it my whole life and going to school, you know, I can remember what you said about, you know, advocating for your own child. I can remember my parents doing the same thing and, you know, the mama and papa bear came out of them to, you know, make sure that I had what I was supposed to uh, have uh, in the general uh, education setting. And, I, you know, I, I was young, so I don't, of course, I don't know everything that was going on. But from my perception, I can recall that it just seemed like, you know, it was just my parents. There were another, there were never, um, you know, other parents that were involved in, like you, like you said, having a collaborative effort to you know, make change. So to hear that uh, organizations uh, like Include NJ and, and others and NJCIE are working uh, together to, um, you know, make sure that, as you said, everyone in that child's life is on the same page to really, you know, move that child forward to reach their uh, full potential. Um, you know, it's, it's really, really encouraging to hear, really great to hear. And, um, you know, I'm proud to really be a part of, uh, you know, part of NJCIE and, and the work that they are doing to, uh, you know, make these changes happen in uh, in our great state of New Jersey. <laughs> well, and yeah. NJCIE is an amazing organization and, and mm -hmm. they are, what I'm seeing with NJCIE is that they are uh, really going in at the school level, at the district level. So going in on that side of it, and what Include NJ does is give a voice to the parents on the other side of it and really give them a friend on the inside that knows like knows what's happening. Because I know when I first started meeting with the school and started having these special education meetings for my own child, 
I had no idea and I had no idea where to look and what, what were my rights as a parent? Am I allowed to come in and see what's happening in the classroom? Am I allowed to get any kind of information from the school? And the school wasn't forthcoming on giving me like, here's, here's what you can do. The school wasn't forthcoming on telling me like, this is your right to be able to have uh, all of this information on what's happening with your student throughout the year and all of this collaboration. So going into it, um, we actually have former special education uh, leaders that help out and speak directly with parents and review their IEPs, review, review their 504 designations, uh, and give advice and advise on how to advocate for their own students. And if that uh, that's exhausted, that the parent is not able to do that on their own, we have special education professionals that have been in districts for years and years that are now retired from the districts that can come in and advocate for the student and be there as a support for the parent so that they're getting all of the information they need to really collaborate with the school, which is what we all want. We just want to come in and be able to work with the school as a partner to come in and ensure that the student has the education that they deserve. Yes, the partnership is uh, key. It's so important uh, to have those partnerships with everyone, uh, you know, everyone involved because it, it takes everybody to to move uh, to move that student forward and to um, you know again have that collaboration with everybody is uh, really key. Right. Yes. So um, my last question I have uh, for you is why. Uh, why do you feel it is important to include parents and caregivers uh, in the inclusive education conversation? And uh, the second part of that of this question is, what positive impact uh, do you feel that parents or caregivers can bring to the inclusive education conversation? So yeah, that definitely goes off. Uh, it goes more into what I was just alluding to about the partnership, right? So having the parents at the table and having them working directly with the educators and being really involved in the student's care and the student's education moving forward, uh, that pulls, that in, ensures that at home they are learning as well, that the education doesn't stop when they walk out of the school building, that education continues and it's all coming from different directions but leading the student to the same place and giving the student the education that they deserve and that they are entitled to. Uh, it's also important that parents are educated on what their rights are in the state of New Jersey. And a lot of that information is, is buried and it's not, uh, it's not easily, it's not easy to go just Google and figure it out because everything is in legalese and it's all, it, there's so much out there that sifting through it can be time consuming. And on top of that, it's just confusing in different directions that you can go in with your, your own student's education. So being able to sit down with the school and come up with a plan and have that plan agreed to by everyone in the room, that is just, that is exactly what our students need. Uh, so that's the importance of having parents in there for inclusive education. And also some parents don't understand the, the research behind inclusion. Uh, some parents will be told, you know, the best thing for your student is to be pulled out. The best thing for your student is to be in a segregated space. And that's not the case. We've got years and years of research backing that up, that that is not what's best for the students. It's not what's best for the students on either side of it. The general education students that aren't dealing with special education and the special education students, it doesn't work for anybody. What works is to have everyone working together in the classroom because everyone is learning from everyone else in that setting. And it's, it's a shame that that information isn't as readily available to parents. So oh, okay. that's another reason that they should be fully engaged and present and asking for inclusive education. Because our laws say that we have, uh, we're supposed to be delivering a least restrictive environment to all students. And the least restrictive environment isn't segregation in any way. 
least restri restrictive environment is keeping them with their peers in their general education classroom. Right. Yeah, that is, um, you know, like you said, the research and the law are, you know, everything is there. It's written out that, you know, inclusive education is, uh, you know, the best way to go. And, um, you know, it's, it's really great, again, uh, all the work that you all are doing there to um, make sure that the parents are uh, educated about inclusion, inclusive education, and, um, you know, and they can figure out uh, together with you all and, and the, the other people and the, the um, other people involved in their child's education, like what's best for their child. And uh, I can definitely relate to as you said, how information is just not out there. It's not easy to find sometimes. <laughs> uh, I, I can remember that again with my parents, just looking for things and trying to figure things out. And this was, I was a child in the eighties and nineties. And so, you know, the internet wasn't, uh, you know, Google wasn't there really <laughs> when I was, you know, when I was younger. So it was even a, a, a little more difficult to find information, I'm sure. Uh, for my parents, but um, you know, I'm, I'm again, I'm glad that parents have that the resource, uh, the resources available to them through uh, include NJ and uh, you know the great work you're doing there. So yeah, so um, back in August, uh, as school is just kind of ramping up to get started, we did a webinar for parents on our Facebook page, and we've left that there as uh, just a resource for parents so that if they have questions about going into IEP meetings and things like that, uh, we're a resource for them. So that recording is available on our Facebook page. Great. Thank you so much for mentioning that. We will uh, be sure to include the link to your Facebook page uh, in the show notes so everyone can uh, go view that webinar with the uh, much needed uh, information uh, to get the school year started. So school is uh, up in full <laughs> full force at this point. So it's, uh, you know, be a great resource for uh, parents to uh, have access to that. So thank you for uh, bringing that up. Absolutely. Yes. So uh, thank you. Thank you for this conversation and um, again, sharing your uh, information uh, with us about yourself and include NJ and um, looking forward to connecting with you again uh, at some point for some other uh, projects and things. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and um, we will be in touch soon. Okay, thank you so right. much for having me. Yes, you're welcome and thank you. We thank you for listening to this episode of the Inclusion Think Tank podcast. This podcast is brought to you by New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education, NJCIE. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on social media at NJCIE. Until next time.